This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abedur Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We're now in front of the house and behind here is the Tesla Model Y Performance from Marcus Biel. And in this video, I'm gonna try something fun here. So you see, I have the EcoFlow here and I've been featuring it uh, recently in my recent videos. And today I want to see if we fully discharge it, fully empty out the, the battery pack here into the car, how much do we actually get out of it? And then how much goes into the car's battery? Because remember that there are some losses here in the inverter. There's some losses here in the uh, on, uh, car's uh, onboard charger. And then uh, final test is we will also drive it and see how far can we drive it in the most economical way without you know, hypermiling it. Uh, to see how, how much range do we actually get from this battery. It's two kilowatt hour battery with 2.4 kilowatt continuous power. So. I've done some preparations. I'm actually charging it up a little bit. I will show the setup. Uh, first, let me show you this one. So this is, um, it's called EcoFlow Delta Max. It comes in many different sizes and prices. And I chose this one because it's fairly easy to handle it. It weighs, oh, okay, this is just the charging cable. It weighs 22 kilograms. It has a nice user interface here. I charge it to 100%. It supports uh, Wi-Fi also, you see we have lots of USB and stuff here, but the one we are looking for is here, Shuko. So, yes, like I mentioned, it can output 2.4 kilowatt continuous power. And then I also have this lovely cable here from, it's from, they call it EV Kabel, EV Kabel in uh, Norway. And the cool thing about this one is that there is some cool information here, some counter and stuff you're gonna look at. So, um, Yes, we have this one ready. I'm just now topping up from the house. And the reason is I just want to make it slightly easier maybe. So we also have got my Tesla here. And uh, the, what was it, zoom in here. So the variables you guys might want to see is this one, the usable remaining. See, we have something called nominal full pack, but the usable remaining is what the car estimates it has. So we'll see once we char or, well, charge the battery here, how much do we actually get here? Uh, and then, well, actually, ideally, I need to be low. Oh, yeah, because, but then I have to kind of be really low because if I'm low, then I will see uh, higher precision on the number because now it's just 0.1 kilowatt hour. So which is kind of low precision since uh, the battery pack we're getting from is just uh, two kilowatt hour, but close enough. Um, so I'm actually just charging it up now a little bit. I'm not sure where I would stop at. Maybe just a round number or something. I'm also trying to pre-cool the battery. So, um, hmm, 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 okay. We'll see, I guess, how to get ready. All right, we're ready for the test now. We unplugged, we charge enough. So uh, let me show you some interesting uh, feature with this car. You see that we locked the car and everything, but uh, it's still reported uh, pulling roughly 150, no, I'm not sure, 180 watts. It's jumping a little bit on that, but maybe roughly 150 watts. It's just some kind of idle pull now. Uh, but we just finished charging, maybe it was resting because it was actually a little bit higher. It was 300 watts uh, right when I unplugged and locked the car. Uh, but then eventually it will go into some kind of resting mode, sleep mode, but uh, center mode is off, by the way. So yes, we start with 29 kilowatt hour usable energy. We're going to reset all the trip here. So you see, this is, by the way, the reason why uh, I guess if you're charging at uh, only 10 amp or shuku, it's kind of inefficient because you have this idle thing here. But of course, if you fast uh, charge faster, let's say seven kilowatt, you will finish charging faster and then the car will go into rest faster. But okay, let's plug in everything and then start the test. All right, let's go. We then activate the AC output and then things should start ramping up now. There, click. Watts goes up. What's up? Wait, is it just idle? Okay, there we go, there we go. Now start ramping up, all right. Okay, and you can see here. Here you see lots of info here. The whole control panel. Amps is going up, fans start running, two kilowatt into the battery. And here you can see that this unit reports 9.8, 9.9 amp. Wow, wait, can you see it? Let me see. Oh, this one is awesome. Look at that information we get here. Wow. It reports two kilowatt right now. It's pulling 10 amp. Wait, it should be more than two kilowatt, huh? What? All right, but interestingly, two 
two kilowatt into the battery after losses. And then, yeah, we'll see now. I reset everything now. So this is gonna take a while. And also, you can see the EcoFlow that it estimates 47 minutes left, all right? That's pretty cool. 2.3 kilowatt, wow. This is even higher than the, when I tested the, on, uh, this is the same car cable I tested on um, the um, uh, Neo ES8. It was pulling slightly less power than this. No, no, you know what? It, uh, maybe, I, no, I was at 99%. Huh, okay. Now, now we wait. Now we wait. This is so interesting. <laughs> okay, so this one, you see the temperature goes up now. Still reports two kilowatt, 226 volt. And here two, oh, interest, wait, huh? Wait, but this one reports 228 volt, 229. Wait, is this one also fluctuating? Let me check here. Huh, that's also interesting how it is reported differently. Wait, does it mean that? Okay, because we measure the voltage here, right? But then the car somehow measures the voltage there. Do we have three volt drop in the cable? Really? Is that the case? Let me check here. 229. No, 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 it's higher. This, my, my, my bad. This, the car reports 228. This one is 226. <laughs> There's no logic here. Wait, oh, ooh, battery power goes slightly up now. It's slightly more than two kilowatts. Nice. Okay, this one still hasn't gone up yet. Yes, we can have a little comment over here. Okay, I have the percent, one percent. We are two, uh, two. This one also reports two kilowatt. This one also reports two kilowatt. But you're getting two kilowatt. But you're not getting two point two kilowatt, two point three kilowatt. Why? why? Should be two point three kilowatt. Why is we do the math here? Well, maybe not. I don't know why it's going like. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Anyway, let's uh, not stress you guys too much. <laughs> hey, what? Now it suddenly went down, huh? Wait, why did it drop? This one is still the same. Okay, so this one is constant. Wait, this one is constant. Huh, but for some reason, battery flow, oh, the pumps went higher for some reason. I don't know if this has to do with the temperature and the battery, no, no, 30 degrees is fine, no problem really. Uh, I don't think it needs to cool down the battery. This is uh, perfectly fine. There, okay, it was just a little uh, uh, temporary uh, dip. Wow, maybe, maybe I shouldn't start with, no, no, this is realistic test. I have not driven anywhere. I've just been sitting in the garage for a little bit, charging, and it was, you know, a nice summer day, so this is a realistic test. A, B, C, always be charging. Hmm. We're down to 29% uh, in the EcoFlow, and you see we gained one kilowatt hour so far, and then the charging cable reports 1.2 kilowatt hour, so Quick math, we have roughly 20% loss, or uh, depending on how you ca ca calculate this, right? But then, according to this one, the 2.3 kilowatt in and then 2 kilowatt out, so that's different percentage, right? Or am I just uh, being a bad Asian here? So almost done, 11 minutes left. Still going, still going, 1%, that last percent, man, last a very long time, almost 1.7 kilowatt hour now. And at least now it reports, uh, yeah, we receive 1.4 kilowatt hour according to this one, but it's a little bit inaccurate. Where it seems like, oh, we are getting a little bit of power limit now. Oh, the final power limit. Okay. Starts throttling a little bit towards the end. Get kilowatt hour. None. None. That's it. The battery is dead. DED. Oh, okay. It was 1.7 kilowatt hour right before it died. All right. 1.4 into the battery. Okay. That's it, that's it, let's charge up this thing. Wow, 51 degrees Celsius in the pack now. All right. Whoa, interestingly. Huh, I'm trying to charge it back up now. But, you see here, it's not charging. It's plugged in, it's on, but it is rapid gating. You can see in the display, there is a temperature thing blinking there. So I simply cannot charge right now. It needs to cool down. Wow. And you know, it wasn't even that hot today. Can you imagine if I use this in Thailand or somewhere warmer? Wow, so how long do we actually have to wait until, well, I can feel like the battery is kind of hot, but what can we really do? We can't do much, right? We just have to wait for it to passively cool down before it starts charging. Seems like 50 degrees Celsius is like the, the critical point for many batteries, <laughs> it's in the red here, but 
It's not charging. Wait, did I? I did plug it in there. Yeah, it's plugged in there. It's plugged in there, everything. You see, there's a really switch here for if you want to charge fast or slow. But it seems like the problem is that if you discharge it to zero, then this could happen. Or if you run it quite aggressively, I guess. But think about this. We started with 25 degrees only. Think about if you started with 35 degrees. That would be way worse. This is like a freaking leaf battery. Nine. It's the EcoFlow leaf. <laughs> Come on, start charging. I don't want to stay at 0% too long. So now we're driving. Let's see how far we can drive on that full battery. So, um, see, I reset from home. You can see that we have done uh, 750 meters so far. And our draw, drive kind of slow-ish, or just, well, it's 50 zone here, so we're just gonna go uh, 50. And I crack open the windows. Uh, HVAC is off, yes. No fans is better than only fans. So this would be in a situation where I guess you will miscalculate and then you don't reach the fast charger and then you just happen to have this uh, EcoFlow with you. And so, so you're trying to now stretch it over to the fast charger or something, right? Final destination or somewhere where you can charge from the grid. So then we'll see. So, um, but I might take a little back and forth drive. We'll see how I do it. Just gonna see it. So we have to wait until this one go drops to 29 kilowatt hour but I will stay on the local roads I will not go to the main road oh that's it 29 but there might be some uh, uh, decimal or hidden decimal or fractions beneath it so but you see that we only pull uh, 1.3 kilowatt hour and see 11 kilometers hmm yeah so when should we actually stop counting then that's the question but I think it's right around here roughly so uh, yeah, I'd say 11 kilometers of range <laughs> with this, this setup, but look at that, this one, 123 watt hour per kilometer, because this is a Tesla, so it's really efficient. And we've been kind of semi hypermiling going at uh, 40, 50 kilometers per hour here, which uh, this, this time I, I shut the windows and have only fans. So uh, really efficient, this Model Y. Oh yeah, back in the garage, you see I have a somewhat tight garage and I will show you why the charge port on the left side is the right side and the right side is the wrong side because here we have the charging, uh, uh, the charging station, it can be placed anywhere but remember that you open the door on this side and then the charge port is uh, here, very convenient, you just plug it in and for cars, press cars I borrow with the charge port on the wrong side, then it's really clumsy. First of all, I have to pull the cable over there, okay, you can say, well, uh, maybe if I have the uh, the charging station here, but still I don't exit on this side and you see I want to hug this wall so I have good enough opening here so I don't bump into the wall here. So many many people actually in the charge port video they also have the same problem and they agree with me that charge port on the left side is the right side and the right side is the wrong side. So remember that you know if you have good range like a Tesla you don't have to recharge you can just charge at home. Yeah. So here by the way great news we are now charging at 500 watts. So if you look in the configurator here, you can change this one. So yeah, um, normally I would just charge at 1000 watts, but actually for the test now, set it to two kilowatts. But it seems like there is a little bit of throttling here because the, te the temperature in the pack has dropped to 45 degrees and that is probably safe enough level for it to start charging. So. Uh, yeah, at least we started charging it because I don't want to keep it at 0%. It's probably not 0% anyway, and probably just, uh, well, given given that it was 1.7 kilowatt hour, then um, maybe it's 5% uh, or 3% state of charge. And then I guess this speed will start ramping up now. And then this temperature will probably not rise too much because we are charging kind of at somewhat low uh, C rating, roughly a little bit more than 0.1, 0.25 C roughly. So, yes, okay. <laughs> so it was slight rapid gate, but it cooled down within uh, a half an hour doing our test drive, and now we are charging again. So, all good. So, yes, now you guys have seen it. The Tesla and the EcoFlow. So, it's like an emergency charger, right? It works. Uh, probably not something uh, uh, most people should get anyway, because what you should do is just stop and charge when you have the chance. But this was a fun experiment to see about the efficiency. And I have to say that the efficiency, is kind of bad so we have 1.7 kilowatt hour from the unit uh, there, there's actually oh i forgot one thing yeah um i forgot that 
the, the, the plug reported 1.7 kilowatt hour, but uh, what did it say 1.7 kilowatt? Uh, but okay, I meant 1.7, I meant kilowatt hour. I should not mix this uh, kilowatt, kilowatt hour. But um, the charging cable uh, did not count the losses in the EcoFlow unit itself. So it could be that we actually get, let's say, 1.8 kilowatt hour from the unit but then the fans and everything steals 100 watt hour maybe uh, I don't know so it's kind of hard to guess what the actual capacity of this one is but it's probably not two kilowatt that, that sounds like a lot again if we actually get two kilowatt hour and then 300 watt hour is lost in the unit itself no, no that that's that, that ain't be that can't be right right but then somehow we end up with only 1.3 kilowatt hour of the actual driving of this tesla so and this is uh, a fairly efficient car with efficient inverters even the silicon carbide inverters so you know this is one of the most efficient cars we have tested with so now you guys know it was interesting kind of pointless but i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later